All right, we got another video from Mr. Otaku Spirit regarding Top Fall 2024 anime in Japan. Is your favorite show popular? Love to see these, you know, statistical breakdowns and, you know, what's popping off in different places, not just, you know, YouTube land in North America. As we find ourselves deep within the fall 2024 anime season, it is time for us to answer the question that we have every single season. Yes. Mm. Is your favorite anime popular in Japan? Is the to me, I don't really care. Some people may want, you know, oh, my show that I'm watching must be recognized by other people or what I'm watching is mid. Nah, I, I think that you should value what you've seen independent of other people's opinions about that show. If you watch something you enjoyed and you think it's great, that's it. You don't need other people glazing it too, but it's cool to see some, you know, confirmation that like other people also enjoy it. The video series that I do every single season where we dive into some of the available charts that we get from Japan and compare them to the popularity of Western aggregation sites. Because yes, as weebs like me like to jest, Japan has better taste than we do. The usual- Mmm, mm, they may. <laughs> it is also fun to see like the difference in what the Western audience wants and what the Eastern audience wants, right? Some shows that never would perform in the Western audience, it does really well in, Jap in Japan and so on. Disclaimers that literally nobody listens to and will complain in the comments about it later. These rankings are based on different sites, more okay. geared towards Japanese viewership. This can be through streaming sites, Japanese television ranking aggregators, and whatnot. All data is taken on the day of recording and can fluctuate based on episode airings, availabilities, exclusivities, Got early it. airings, etc. This data is not the end-all be-all. It doesn't say that your favorite anime sucks. It's simply an interesting way to analyze interest in certain series and honestly gives us a good perspective on the success of certain properties. I bet Orb is popping off so hard right over here. I bet Orb is fucking crazy. Like it, it is actually kind of crazy how much um people glaze Orb in Japan and so on. My theory is uh it's a bunch of weebs, but it's the opposite. Rather than, you know, Western culture people, Western people, you know, glazing Eastern culture. It's the it's Eastern people glazing Western culture. That's why Orb does so well, I think, overseas. But over here, it doesn't really seem to make sense. Because despite how well the show does over in the West, most of the time, all that matters for a lot of these companies is how many eyeballs it gets in Japan. Mm. Because yes, most anime is just advertisements for source material. With all that out of the way, let's dive into it. Starting things off with how well things are doing globally based on English data sites. Globally. This means, yes, my anime list and any list. Now, yes, between the two sites, we're seeing pretty much both are kind of on par with each other. Yeah. Dandadon is topping the charts across the board. This. Yep, I expected this. I never thought that ReZero would, you know, be number one because, again... Multiple seasons means more people get filtered out, and in the niche is already kind of a uh, sorry. The genre is it's a bit niche. The isekai story, as popular as it is, I think Dandana is way more wide appealing. It's the first season as well. So many people are talking about this show, glazing it, and rightfully so. I think it deserves number one for fall 2024. Series is doing so well, and I'm thankful for that because I'm actually enjoying it a lot. Right below that is ReZero's third season, despite Let's the fact go. that unfortunately we have a wait period before the second half goes. Mm -hmm. It is doing extremely well. Now this is where we get that's great to that's great to hear. Like third season and it's it's performing this strong. That's that's great. Like a difference between Mal and Annie List, where we have with Mal, for some reason, unfortunately, Uzumaki is number three. <laughs> Now, to be clear, the uh, it's probably more out of respect for Junji rather than the actual anime because the anime is dookie and they did Junji dirty. This is only a four episode series. A lot of people watched it. It was available on television and everything. And yes, yeah. you do have to take into consideration, even though it is the most popular, meaning the most people are watching it or watched it. It is pretty much the. That's right. This is like no ratings. This is like eyeballs are on it. Right? Sometimes you have amazing art and people will watch it because it's so good. Sometimes you have a fucking train wreck. A dumpster is on fire. Does that mean it's great? No, but people will still watch it because they want to see what the dump fire is. The lowest ranking show of the entire season. It did not do well with a 5.9. So even though a lot of people watched it, yeah. pretty much everybody hated it. They're watching it for the ridiculousness of the shitty animations. <laughs> And now Annie List has it as well, but it's down one ranking. They're kind of flip-flop with Blue Lock itself. Another show where, again, it's a dumpster fire. 
But ugh, the story is carrying. The story is actually carrying, and every episode is actually really fun to watch. And Blue Lock is also equally not doing very well when it comes to rankings. And I could only imagine, based on all the clips that I'm seeing on Twitter, what the reason could be. <laughs> then mm. after that, both sites are on par with each Bleach. other. Again, we go right into Bleach. Blue Box, which I was kind of surprising. I thought Blue Box would be much higher. I think when the season first started, it was pretty high, but I think it's... Yeah, a lot of people were talking about this show out of nowhere. I don't know where all the interest came from. I guess the source material fandom is huge, but this shit got glazed unreally. And I'm like, all right. And I watched it and it was pretty good. Unfortunately, due to copyright reasons, right? TMS Entertainment, they don't like it. So, wah wah. It's kind of come down quite a bit, which we'll kind of get into is pretty much being shown with a lot of the ranking sites on Japan, too. Then we go right into Fairy Tale, Spirit Chronicles, second season, <laughs> Afreda, third season, Don Mach. Wait, wait, what did she just say? Two. Then we go right into Fairy Tale, Spirit Chronicles, second season, Afreda, third. Afreda, baby. Afreda. Fuck Arifurata. What does Arifurata even mean? What what does Dandadan mean? What the hell are these title names? Do they have a meaning? Third season, Don Machi, fifth season, and Shangri La, second season, mm. and then 2.5 Dimensional Seduction. Carry over from last season. 2.5 Dimensional Seduction has had two cores, so that's probably why it's up so high. But you're getting to like a lot. Yeah, Arifurata English translation is from commonplace to world's strongest, but maybe Arifurata is a bit of like an acronym. Arifurata means commonplace, something common. Maybe it's a bit of like a shortened form for shortened form of Japanese words that just make up that from commonplace to world's strongest. A lot of the sequel shows. This season overall, a lot of the high ranking stuff is like sequels and whatnot. The most unfortunate thing that I'm seeing Orba. with both Mal and Annie List is definitely a lot of this series that I'm loving the most this season, especially Orb. <laughs> Orb is way down at 17. Damn. It's literally like the best new series besides Don Da Don of the Yeah, I, honestly, I could agree with that. What I've seen from Orb was fascinating. Such a different setting, such a different tone. The darkness really pisses me off. I can't see shit at nighttime unless the stars are out, but the story itself was phenomenal. But if you think about the average consumer of anime, I don't think they would really appreciate stuff like this. They would rather watch, you know... OP Pro Tag gets a harem for the 17th time. This season, and it's 17. <laughs> it's just a massively unfortunate thing. That yes, people are watching things like Spirit Chronicles and Afureta. Yes, they would rather watch Spirit Chronicles. They would rather watch Arifureta. They would rather watch these garbage-ass fucking Isaac. <laughs> They're not garbage, but oh, it's just... I feel like Orb had a, such a good story, and it's just like art. And then you have these like shitty, trashy fan service shows, which is something that we enjoy on a daily basis. But it, it's just unfortunate that this show can't be recognized. And all this other stuff, more than Orb. Pretty much one of the best new series that I've seen in a long time. But again, that goes back to that whole thing where just a lot of people just want escapism. They want explosions. They want harems. They want fun. They don't. That's right. They want lore on fictional worlds. They don't want lore about their own world. Now, I know that um, the history here is very stretched and the depiction of churches are very, very exaggerated where heretics and shit like that, it doesn't really happen like that. I mean, it's work of fiction. I, I, th I found it to be very compelling. I really enjoyed the whole, like, you know, playing the game of a secrecy and trying to not become a heretic and try to confront the truth that the church is intentionally hiding in order for them to stay in power and... All these different things is really compelling, but the viewership has demanded that y'all don't give a fuck. Y'all just want to watch Rio go around picking up girls and dropping them off in a different land and making them wait. And we go to a different region and pick up another girl. Let's go, Spirit Chronicles. I don't want people being hunted down for heretical thoughts. <laughs> Even Rama was a big surprise for me. That's way mm. down at 23. And then, really? of course, and then I was expecting it, Suma Show way down way down at 40 which Damn. is very unfortunate considering there's only like 60 shows a season it's way down at the bottom of the barrel wonder if the advertisement marketing campaign they went with their name obviously it's a shocking title that's gonna intrigue a lot but disgust a lot too no matter how good your story is if you kind of do that i wonder if that filter out a lot of people where they didn't even give it a chance but again that was kind of expected because Again, it's more slice of life, and yes, it's got a lot of controversy around its actual Japanese title. It is what it is. But with that out of the way, now that we've gotten the English and the global out of the way, the All right, filthy peasants go away. Stinky Western audiences now. 
the only opinion that matters, the Japanese audience, what do they think? People that have no taste. Let's get into the real people. Yes, sir. The Japanese people who have the best taste. Again, yes. that's a joke. Let's get... <laughs> yeah, we know. It is, the sarcasm there isn't clear enough. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. It's just all a fucking meme, okay? Things off with Abima. And again, I want to reemphasize before I get into the Japanese ranking sites that, yes, a lot of this stuff is based on availability, exclusivities, yada, yada, yada. So you might have cases like, for instance, Bleach. Bleach is not going to be on a lot of the charts for the streaming services because the actual TV broadcast of Bleach was a day before everything mm. else. So most people are that really want it are going to be watching on television and not on Abima or on Amazon or anything. First things first, yes, Abima. Abima okay. is a very popular streaming website. I like to use Abima just because all the viewerships are all available. So I can actually get viewer count and everything. It gives me a really clear picture cool. on exactly who is watching what and how many times. Kind of like Muse Asia channel on YouTube. That's mostly for Southeast Asia, but this is specific for Japan. And yes, Abima, just like in the West, Dun, dun, dun. Number one, doing really well. Again, this is kind of the great thing about that I'm seeing with this season particularly is that across the board, West and in Japan, they love certain shit. shows are really kind of rising to the top. And Donadon dun is one of them. Like yeah, it's good to see how wide appealing it is. And that's such a difficult thing to do, to be wide appealing, right? You need to, like, when you make something, usually people focus on one specific thing to appeal to a specific audience. To appeal to a wide audience like that is very hard. And Dandadan has so many crazy shit going on. There's so many different things happening. It's crazy how they're able to contain that chaos and deliver a product that makes sense and it appeals to so many people. Like across pretty much all the ranking sites, Dandadan is doing very, very well. Right below yeah. that on Abima, number two, ReZero. There we go. Yes, also doing extremely well on Abima in Japan. Again, not much of a surprise here. ReZero is an extremely Blaze. popular franchise. Besties a guy. And people are loving it. Now here's where we get into the... <laughs> <laughs> Listen, even we dropped this shit in our channel because of how low... Perf well, it was low... Per it was average performing, but the watch time wasn't there. People just wanted to see specific moments. But like, bro, this show, Hila got banished from a party. Th this is number three. This is number three. Usual Japan, where, again, we got to emphasize the idea that a lot of people just want to watch something fun, and they don't have to think too much about it. Like, this is, this shit was so generic. It's fun. It's junk food for me, right? These type of, it's not an isekai, but it could be an isekai setting. It's like this dungeon shit, adventures, guild, you know? Shitty things happen to the main character, being treated, you know, bad, poorly, but he's actually really OP and doing stuff. Like, it was a fun show, but I am shocked that this is number three. About, but yes, number three on Abima with the most views. Yes, Banished Healer. <laughs> that show is doing what the really, fuck? really well on Abima in Japan. Now, I don't really see it really anywhere else. And I think that might be a case where it's more being viewed on Abima versus other platforms. So... Keep that in mind. Now, number four, hey, this Orb. is where my hope is restored. This is Here we go. What I tell you, the opposite of weebs, man. They're keeping Orb alive across the sea. This is where if I can't rely on my local fans, my domestic fans, my Western fans for enjoying peak anime, at least I could be reassured that Japan understands what good anime is. Orb on the mm -hmm. movements of Earth. Number four on Abima. Thank you, Japan. Great show. They know where it's at. It's crazy to me that Healer Banished is higher than Orb, though. That's crazy. If you look at the production value of, you know, Healer like Banished, like, oh my god, it's... It's not the worst. It's just so fucking mid, and that is higher than Orb. That, that, that just blows my mind. Right below ReZero. ReZero barely beat <laughs> Banished Healer. ReZero barely... I don't, I'm not sure about barely, but I'm just saying it because it's second and third place. That's... Oh my god. That show is absolutely incredible, and I'm really happy to see it actually getting attention there. Because, again, like I said earlier, in a lot of cases, this stuff, its success is really kind of riding on how well it does in Japan because, again, they want to sell source material. So at least knowing that it's doing good in Japan gives me more hope for them to continue on more stuff, which I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be a full adaptation, so I'm guessing that's not really going to make a difference anyways, but I'm at least happy it's getting attention there. Moving on to number five on wow, Abima. Wow, Life. Life in another world. I'm it's pretty good. Pretty fun. The most recent arc, 
I'm not feeling it too much with this dungeon exploration shit. I don't really watch this for him to just fight stuff, but rather the storytelling around different characters. But the first major arc that got concluded recently, it was it was really good to watch, yeah. I'm actually really enjoying that show, so that's actually good to see that up there. And again, this is probably going to be... I put this shit like 7 out of 10 right now, I think. I'll probably end with 7 out of 10 too. Just okay. It's not terrible. It's not amazing. It's fun. Does that mean it's mid? I don't even know where mid would be. It's mid like 5 out of 10. I think a 5 out of 10 is fucking terrible, but... Loner Life is fun. 7 out of 10 anime so far. In that realm of something that's just fun to watch. People just want something to turn their brain off and just see a guy be OP in another world. Then we get number 6 on Abima, which is Danmachi Season 5, mm -hmm. which that's good to see too, because I'm really... Danmachi, I think, is heavily underrated. Because of the nature of 5th season, a lot of people get filtered out. They don't even know what the fuck this is anymore. But, man, this story of Season 5 is so, so good. And JC staff, you can tell the amount of love they're pouring into the show. It just looks stunning. Really enjoying Don Machi. Ever since Season 4, it has been really picking up. So, yep. it's good to see it get attention. Number 7? Like, the more I think about it, Don Machi. Season 2, 3, 4, 5. I don't really remember much of Season 1, but 2, 3, 4, 5, bro. It's peak. Every season is so peak. Season 2 is starting off with the War Games, right? Like, that shit was so, so hype. And then ending with, you know, the Haruhime stuff and Freya slapping. What was her name? Fucking, uh... Oh, I forgot her name again. I always forget her name. And, and then the season three with Wiene. The discrimination. Yeah, Ishtar. I keep forgetting her name. I can never remember that name. Then you have, like, Wiene, right? The Xenos. That was a crazy plot twist. The way that it ended with the fight against Austria. Like, holy shit. Season four. Just peak despair and threat that I've never expected in a show like this. And the bonding with Ryu, like, Damachi, the more I think about Damachi, the more I realize how amazing of a show it is. But it's not getting the recognition it deserves, man. I wish more people was into it. Grieving soul retire. <laughs> Let mm. this grieving soul retire. I, I kind of wonder, I probably should have checked again to see how it's doing in the later episodes, because I pretty much took about six episodes of every single season to see okay. their viewer count to kind of get an idea of what's doing better than other shows. And that's one of those ones where I'm wondering if the recent episodes have been dropping off, because for me anyways, mm. the last two episodes, despite, yes, my favorite Seiyu being in it, it has just kind of lost a lot of its flavor. Yeah, the, the whole like, <sighs> slimes are attacking, oh no. <sighs> They're stalling. The funniest part about this show so far is guessing who the fuck is Sophia Black. That's it. Just only care about who is Sophia Black right now. Other than that, it's just, eh, just three showing up and doing her stuff is okay. But like, I think uh, it, it, it is uh, the most recent two episodes. It, it's, it's a bit relative to the earlier stuff, a bit slower, a little bit boringer flavor, but it is what it is. Number eight, Spirit Chronicles second season. Number nine, Afreta third season. Skip, Number skip. ten, Do Over Damsel. Damn, Arifureta, Spirit Chronicles, all just skip. No summary necessary. That's a surprise there, because that's, I don't even think it's charting on Mal or any chart. <laughs> Do Over Damsel's not even charting over there. Over here, it seems to be doing decently well, so okay. there you go. Number 11, Goodbye Dragon Life. Oh my god. The villainous show is not here at all. I'm going to be the villain that goes down in history. I thought that would be better. Like, I would rate villain as higher than Goodbye Dragon Life and Banish Healer. How the fuck is Banish Healer third place? How is that possible? Abima is crazy. Y'all are insane over there. If Aristocrat season two. Ah, uh, Aristocrat had to drop it, unfortunately. Not enough interest going on. It was a decent show, though. Hunger Law season two. Blue Box way down at 14. Really? Wow. Which, that's not too much of a surprise. Blue Box. Dude. I want you to realize how much effort was put into Blue Box compared to Banished Healer. Dude, third versus 14. What? What? <laughs> I mean, at this point, it's Healer over everything, though, because it's third place. That's how is it third place? <laughs> what? What? what the fuck is happening in a Bima? Because again, that's something that's going to be probably more watched on Netflix, but it is what it is. Miss Servant, Sword mm. Online, GGO2. Yeah, I expected GGO2 to perform bad because this is not SAO. It has the GGO name. It doesn't have Kirito and the gang. People don't know this show. Uh, regarding this show, I saw potential here. The production value was really good, but the story was so boring. Nothing was really happening. 
we dropped it as soon as you know she got to the school, which is unfortunate because I thought it was kind of getting picked up by them. But if an audience never existed, it's that's not gonna suddenly show up to me. So it's just yeah. Sword Art Online DG02 Demon Lord 299, which so low, Mao 299 so low. Demon Lord 299, to be fair, and again, this is based on a same amount of episodes. That technically is like a late starter. So, and I have to say. It's much Even though I had hopes so low. for Japan to at least pick up the, the even they don't want this shit. Show. Unfortunately, even on a Bima, Suma Show is way down at twenty three. Why is that? I heard that the story is good, unless you guys are lying to me. So there's two reasons: either the story is actually fucking garbage, and or the title. It's that simple. People were turned off by the title. Even Japan was like, "No, we ain't dealing with that shit." I don't know. I'm trying to just come up with hypothesis here, but. If a story is actually good, it, people will recognize it. But sometimes if you do viral marketing campaigns and it doesn't align with what people want and it kind of turns them off before they even watch it, that also, you know, hinders it. And right below that at 24 is negative positive angler. So two series that I was really hoping would do really well over there. This is the uh, terminally ill person finding new friends and then, yeah, ugh, I'm not going to go out of myself to watch that shit. Not doing well. <laughs> so there's no hope for those two series. It looks like a, a Bima enjoys shit that I enjoy. Dumb, stupid fun. And more heavy drama gets left behind. Now with a Bima out of the way, let's look at Amazon. Now, okay. Amazon's very difficult because Amazon Japan does have a lot of anime. Like, it is like almost the premier way of streaming. That's right. Just because your favorite show wasn't mentioned in Bima doesn't mean that it was didn't make it. It's that it might have not even been on there like Blue Lock. Anime in Japan... Unfortunately, there's no real available data on their site as regards to rankings or for actual viewer count. So it makes it difficult to look at, even though I do want to look at it. There is available sites where you can get rankings from, but there's no publicly available data from it. The way that they get the data is not very consistent, and I've seen a lot of irregularities in their data, so I can't really use that. The way okay. that I was able to kind of check Amazon JP was really looking at ratings and scorings. Okay. This is basically based on how many people actually rated on an actual show and what the score itself is. That's fair. And it's odd to see that there's actually a big difference between two of them. First of all, how many ratings they actually got. Don Don, Don easily number one. Yep. A lot of rankings on that one. Remember, just because a show is getting a lot of rating doesn't mean it's good. If you have Blue Lock or something that's, you know, uh, people are talking about it because of a disaster it is, it'll have a lot of ratings. So numbers, sure. But then it's just like, what is the actual rating? So first of all, we're going to do just, you know, numbers. So it's way up there. It's at number one. Dragon Ball Daima right behind it. It's our first kind of showing of wow. Dragon Ball Daima, honestly. So it's good. To it's unfortunate that Dragon Ball Daima was not able to capture and retain the hype because it's more like Dragon Ball rather than Dragon Ball Z. People care more about the Unga Boonga hype from Z. That's where the biggest fan base of Dragon Ball series is. Daima is a bit more slower more RPG-esque? I don't know, like Dragon Ball. It, it's, it's not the kind of same kind of show. It, it makes sense why it flopped for me. To see that it's doing well on Amazon Japan. Loner Life, right behind that. So that's kind of consistent with Abima quite a bit there, because again, Abima, wow. it was number I five. I love this shit. Grieving Soul, again, similar to Abima, right behind that. Blue Box at number five, again, okay. probably pretty low because most people are probably going to be watching on Netflix, but it's going to get a lot of viewerships there as well. Megalomir at number six. That's oh. cool to see there because, again, that's another one that's not really getting much attention in the West, and I think that's... This was the uh, non-lewd gushing over magical girls. I think, no, no, no. It, it thinks it's a bit different. It's like more management of gushing, like, like magical girl shit. Mainly because it's only available on Amazon in A, but at least it's getting attention there. I think it's a really good show. I'm enjoying it a lot. And number seven, appraisal skill. Mm. Villainous goes down in history. There is the villainous show. This is pretty decent. I'm enjoying it a lot this season, actually. Three at number eight. And then do over damsel at number nine, which again, doing very well at least in Japanese rankings, at number 10 on Abima, number nine on Amazon. Now the scoring, again, this is based on how well the score itself is. Here we go, That's where the it ratings. kind of shifts quite a bit and I start to kind of validate my enjoyment for a certain show. With a 4.5 scoring and the most scores, we have Sumo Show. Wow. So the toppest rank with the most scoring, Sumo Show is number one on Amazon JP. Thank you. <laughs> At okay. least on there, okay. it's doing good. Now, again, it's not the most ranks, but at least those that actually watch it are scoring it very, very well. So good to see that. Yeah, that makes sense to me. It's not, 
you know, viewed by a lot of people, but there is a diehard fan base of people that do enjoy it. And of course, because of how loyal and specific that audience is, they're going to give it a much better rating than something that has a lot more people watching it. Yeah, smaller, condensed, very loyal audience enjoys that content. Makes sense. I'm really enjoying Sumo Show. It's extremely emotional. It's just a really fantastic series that presents some very cool questions about taking over a life of somebody and the effect that that has on families. And yes, obviously regrets and second chances. Then right behind that with a 4.5 as well, Punidu is a Kawaii Slime. Tough. Again, fuck? another series that I'm enjoying a lot. I'm not going to say it's the greatest show ever, but for what it does, it does it really well. And I usually get a WTF moment every single episode of like, I can't believe. Yeah, I'm just looking at this cover and I'm already saying what the fuck. They did that. But it seems like Amazon JP, a lot of people that are watching it really enjoy it. Then at number three, we have Kenshin, which is really cool to see that there as well. Natsumi's Book of Friends at number four. Yay. <laughs> Again, really enjoy the new season. Good to see that there. Then Nina the Starry Bride at number five. So it's very interesting how all these shows based on just ratings, right? And amount of people rating it, like ratings is the highest. Makes sense to me. Why are any of these shows never shown in the top rankings here of people voting or watching? It's because these shows are so slept on that only a few people actually rate. And the few people that's actually watching and rating are also hardcore fans of it. It only makes sense that these would have a higher score relative to the other bigger, bigger shows with a lot of people watching it. If Afreta at number six. And then that's when we get down to 4.0 rankings, which we start off with Dandadan again. Easily they... Again doesn't mean Dandaran is bad at its 4.0 rating. It's just that the more people, the bigger the show is, you're going to have people glazing, you're going to people have hating, right? It's just how number breakdowns work. So these ratings at the end of the day, you have to see how many people actually fucking voted and what was the average score, right? You have fucking 10 dudes saying this is 5 out of 5, right? 10 out of 10. It's a perfect score. But that's 10 fucking votes. <laughs> Right? No one's even watching it. Compared to the show that's getting 100,000 and a lot of people are also hating on it and loving it, right? It makes sense why the numbers are the way they are. Highest amount of rankings, and it's still at a 4.0, which is still really, really fantastic. Then we have Graving Soul Retire at number eight. And then at number nine, we have Blue Box. So really cool stuff there. Now, Netflix Japan rankings. This okay. is really cool because this is By country on Netflix's site. They show a top 10 every single week. And so with Netflix, specifically in Japan, number one, Without a doubt, dun, 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 dun. across the board, no doubt whatsoever. Everyone here, loves this shit. Don don don. Yes, don don is doing incredibly well on Netflix Japan. Basically, how I got these numbers is I look every single week during the season itself, and I write down what placement they are in the top ten list. Then I'll give an actual weighted value to each placement in the top ten, and then tally up that entire score. Sure. Don don was like number one for multiple weeks. And I think it's still at this point, still number one. This show is doing incredibly well that it's topping everything else that's currently airing in Japan. On It's doing stupid well. When was the last time a show had this much wide appeal success? Furiren? The most recent one I can really think of is Freerun. Of how much it was glazed and talked about. Not just like hardcore anime watches, but casuals. Everybody across the board, right? I'm talking about a show that appeals to so, so many people. Freerun, I think, is the most recent you know, anime that I think was talked about on this scale. Netflix is doing that. Oshinoko, I don't think so at all. Oshinoko was hyped for one episode and then people immediately dropped it as they realized that this is not the murder mystery, but you're just doing idle bullshit. It failed so hard in the Western audience. Japan, they care about it more, but I'm talking about wide appealing globally everywhere free run was the show that like everybody was fucking talking about non-anime watchers too they're like oh they want to check out free run it's crazy what an impact that show had good right behind that one is blue lock blue lock is doing very well staying up on the chart then again <laughs> fuck is blue lock <laughs> oh Apis studios is gonna see this shit and they're gonna dude that's the worst part Apis studios is gonna see the numbers that blue lock is generating and be like See? I don't hear the haters. People, all they do is think about us. They just talk about us. We live rent free in their heads. Fuck it. Season three, greenlit. We're going to be even lazier. Oh, come on. This. Uh, it, uh, Tower of God's not even mentioned at all. I want you to realize that. Tower of God has not been mentioned anywhere. Not a sink. Not Amazon. Not Netflix. Not Abima. 
Not Japanese ranking, not global ranking. T Tower of God is gone, bro. Validating the love for it. Orb. Yes, Orb is doing very, very well on cool. Netflix Japan. Then below that, we have a lot of shows that are kind of jumping into the top 10 list and kind of dropping back out of it. But we have ReZero Third Season was on there. Rama mm -hmm. One Half was doing well for a cool. while. Yakuza cool. Fiance kind of popped on there at some point. A lot of people are telling me to watch Yakuza Fiance. I, we watched the Giga video on, you know, the, uh, Fall 2024 stuff, and it looked fucking crazy. Uh, could be fun to watch, but uh, too busy right now. we got to focus on Rama and Apothecary Diaries. And then Dragon Ball Daima, once that finally started airing. I will admit that Dragon Ball Daima did start late, mm. so it only recently started kind of jumping in there. But really cool data. I really enjoy looking at Netflix Japan's data. Beyond cool. there, we do have two services that does look at TV rankings and does like aggregation of TV rankings. And the first one we have is video research and content. You know what extra category he should add and maybe he shouldn't? The amount of torrents, the amount of seeders, downloaders, based on each episode of different shows. I, I, get, get the numbers of the high seas, you know? These are all corporate, you know, fucking uh, legitimate sources. What about the high seas? What do the pirates want? You know, I, that would be an interesting category. And typically these ones actually have actual TV broadcast stuff. So it's going to be a lot of stuff that's long running series. Like, of course, typically Sazai san is always number one. Chibi Marako chan pops up there as well. Detective oh, Conan's always on there. Precure's on there. Doraemon's on there. Then right below that, this is the first big surprise from this ranking. Blue. Oh, this is the Shinsen Gumi anime. Gumibiru. Yes. I, okay, I have to cl clarify here for anybody in the West because I'm pretty sure nobody knows the heck that show is. But no, Blue Movie Roll uh, is a series that is airing currently, and it's just not really on any rankings anywhere. I'm not seeing really anybody Damn. talk about it, but at least on care. TV rankings in Japan, it's doing very well at number two. Why? Why TV rankings of this show that didn't get picked up by any different site? Because I, I don't know. Six. Then we have One Piece, of course, pops up on there. Butt Detective at number eight. <laughs> what? It's called Butt Detective? His face is a butt. Okay. Then again, Magalamir. Magalamir is doing Girls. very well on TV rankings, so that's a huge surprise there. And then at number ten, we have Dragon Ball Daima. Our other TV aggregator that we use, which is Anime Iga, they use Demora as their actual aggregator. Number one. Orb. Again, my third validation for this. Orb. <laughs> Orb. Number. One. Otaku Spirit. His goal wasn't to give us, you know, statistics of anime all across the world and in Japan. His goal was to find the most biased way of representing Orb as number one. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But it does uh, bring me joy when he gets very happy about Orb. Because Orb is such a good show. I love Orb. It was great. A lot of people, a lot of Japanese audiences were super hyped about Orb in the beginning. But... I think a lot of people were also very pissed off with the plot twist of the main character not being the main character, you know, at after three. So drops off is kind of crazy. Number one, Orb. So fantastic to see that there. I am so orb, beside orb, myself orb, that it's a number orb. one somewhere. It's <laughs> On Orb in time. ranking in Japan, Orb is number one. It's Orb in time. I could not be more happy. Love to see the love for that one. Then number two, we have Dragon Ball Daima again jumping up on the chart. Number three, Blue Lock, doing well over there. And then again, number four, Blue Mibiro. <laughs> this okay. show just kind of pops up out of nowhere. Hey, people like us. <laughs> I, I, I kind of feel like I need to go back and check it out now. But yes, number five, again, Mega the Mirror. Love to see the love for that one. Really happy to see that it's getting some attention. I, it's kind of one of those things where because of how it seems like at least Amazon in the West is kind of ruining the hype for it. Mm. I kind of wonder how well that show would have done if it was on Crunchyroll or something like that. Something that people have easy access to. Then we have number Maybe. six, Rama One. Listen, the Orb Glaze is great. Like, it's a great show. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. I think a lot of people will get turned off by, again, the setting and the overall premise of Orb. But it's, it's a very different show. If you want to expand your palette beyond just fucking dumbass Unga Boonga, you know, power fantasies and harm shit like check out orb it's a great story half number seven appraisal skill second season then we have re-zero third season really cool to see that on tv rankings then shangri la frontier second season and then at number 10 dun -dun -dun. which again i'm pretty sure that most people are probably watching dun -dun -dun on the services rather yeah. than on tv but it is what it is but really cool stuff there really cool to see kind of the, the yeah the tv rankings definitely um 
probably not the best indicator of what people that watch anime really want because I don't think the average consumer is watching anime through a TV. A little shift in what is actually popular. Obviously the biggest shock for me over all this data is to see, yes, how well Shima Show is doing on Amazon, which is a big surprise there, and Punido as well. Again, they're not the most rated, but they have the highest ranking. But yeah, super happy to see that even across the entire board, across the West and Japan, Dandadan and ReZero at least Number one, are doing baby. incredibly well. It seems I still cannot comprehend how after Dandadan and ReZero, Amoeba has said Banished Healer is the next best thing. That blows my mind. That just is the most ridiculous, ridiculous glaze I've ever seen. I've seen Banished Healer. Probably one of the few fucking people that reacted to it on YouTube because of how fucking mid and, you know, generic it was. We had fun with it. But like, goddamn, number three? That's crazy. Seems like both sides, everybody's just loving it. It kind of just has that, that global connection that no matter where you're at, there's a love for those two franchises. And again, mm. it makes sense because at least for both of those franchises, they're doing an incredible job with the adaptation. Visually, they look absolutely fantastic. But yes, for me personally, Orb. Orb in time. <laughs> at least for me personally, Orb, seeing that doing very well in Japan is probably my biggest enjoyment to see because bunch of weebs that's opposite eastern people glazing western culture bro it's those people that's the hyping up orb yes even in the west where it's way down at 17 it's doing incredibly well number one in demora number three on netflix it's just doing very well there probably the biggest shock for me really is just around blue box because mm. i know that when blue box first started airing at least in the West, everybody was talking about it. Everybody was beside themselves with how... Yeah, I think a lot of people were popping off at the openings, right? And how amazing it looked. I didn't really understand the hype. I watched a couple episodes and it was entertaining. But, like, the amount of, like, push for Blue Box was crazy. And maybe it was a bunch of hardcore, you know... Source material readers glazing the show because it might be that good. Beautiful blue box was. And thus you had a lot of clips on Twitter. Everybody's yeah. excited for it. They were just super jazzed for this romance slice of life that was popping up. But I know something very quickly that over the weeks, people stopped talking about it completely. Mm. Fake. Fraudulent. Uh-uh. Dandaran continues to get glazed. Shit like this is a bunch of people trying to create gas, but there's no substance. And... I can't say for sure because I've only seen three episodes until TMS Entertainment, you know, blocked every fucking reactions on YouTube. So I don't know. Maybe it's good, but if people, you know, kind of lose hype it's immediately after the first couple episodes, it's kind of telling that the hype was fragile. It was the house of cards that was built to the weak foundation. Maybe some people just wanted to ride the bandwagon and get some Twitter clout and delay something that looked good, but turns out it's not really that good. And I sort of had the same feeling when I watched the first few episodes. It kind of started kind of cooling down for me quite a bit. What was interesting is I seen a similar effect when I looked at something like Abima. With Abima, again, you, where it has actual viewership counts, it had the same massive decline over the mm. episodes that I kind of seen with the hype around it in the West. As the episodes went along, which typically all these shows will have this happen. What happened? I mean, you can't just continuously grow. You're going to peak and then you're going to plateau. But that plateauing point, right, it, it, that should be the concern. Was it that bad? Did some bullshit happen with the love triangle that people got pissed off about? This one was showing a dramatic decline in how many viewerships it was getting. So it kind of validated the same feeling that I was getting with the Western, you know, fan base around Blue Box itself. The hype just kind of dropped over time. Not to say okay. that nobody's watching it. It's just kind of a, an interesting observation. Other than that... I, I want to say the hype was all around the actual opening rather than the anime episodes. I'm kind of seeing the usual that I see with a lot of the Japanese rankings. Just a lot of them really just enjoy shows that just kind of give an escapism. It's the Yeah, but there's so many shows that give escapism. That much does this shit. I say Lone Life Isekai is better in this shit. I say Griever or Talker. Talker wasn't even shown here. Watajutsu or something, the fucking uh, notorious talker is gonna be the greatest clan or some shit. Like, like, these shows are way better than Banish Healer. Banish Healer is that high? Healer banished from the party. It's the, the loner life in another world. It's the goodbye dragon life type of shows. Shows that people just enjoy to kind of see. As much as people hate Isekais in the West, Japan typically likes it. Again, a lot yeah. of the, the hype around and the love around Isekais is the idea of getting away from your current life, getting away from the modern time world, and just enjoying a life in a fantasy settings. That's what it provides, and that's what people typically like. It is
That's right. It's not enough to just enjoy and consume media as a form of escapism. The genre itself must be also a form of escapism. You know what I'm saying? Already watching a movie or different shows, you're escaping. But isekai, due to the nature of you getting a second chance in a different world, that adds on to the whole escapism part of it. I don't know. Actually, I'm really, really, really happy to see how well Magalimere is doing. And it makes me want to get right back into it. I'm behind like an episode of it and I've been enjoying it. It's not the greatest thing ever, but again, I'm really happy to see how much Japan is really enjoying it. But yeah, that's the that's the lowdown. All that right. is the lowdown on what is popular in Japan. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as Thank you, Mr. Otaku Spirit, for compiling all the data and giving us a nice little inner presentation of what's popping off. And yes, it is still mind-boggling that Banish Healer is third in Abima, bro. Right below ReZero and, you know, uh, Dandadan. It's Banish Healer. Maybe I should pick back Banish Healer back up, bro. I mean, it's not as if Banish Healer was doing that bad in terms of performance. I just thought it was so mid and I'm about to open a different slot. Should we get started back on Banish Healer? <laughs> I don't know, bro. <laughs> I don't know, no, 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 I, maybe, just, just maybe, just, it's, what date does it air again? It's in the back of my head now, maybe you're gonna do it, nah, you're not gonna do it, here, here, please go give Mr. Otaku Spirit a like in the video, here's a link, please go support his channel, go give him a like, and I'll see you next time.